This is the continuation of the A to Z rifle build, exactly how I build a rifle. Today we're mounting the rifle scope finally. Last time I bedded the rings and that just enables full contact, 100% matches it with my exact scope. So as you can see here, I got the rings bedded with some JB quick and now today we're gonna mount the scope. So the scope all cleaned off. I wanted to get all that uh, wax off the scope. And if you had any of the epoxy on there, make sure you clean that off because I don't want anything that's gonna bind when I place it in there. Um, first step, what I'm gonna do is if you're gonna have a bubble level, which I highly recommend everyone has a bubble level on, sometimes when you mount these scopes, the gap in here is a little too tight. So if you try to, if you install your scope and then after the fact decide you want one of these, sometimes it's hard to slide this underneath here. As you can see, I don't think this one can go through there. I can't slide it underneath. So you're gonna to wanna to install this a bubble level before you mount your scope. If you have to take it off to, to mount a bubble level later, it's no big deal, you can do this exact same process again. But since I'm starting from scratch, I'm gonna install the bubble level first. And it's all personal preference of where you like your bubble. Reason why I put the ring so far forward is I like to put my bubble level right here on the left side so I can see it when I'm in the gun. And right now I'll just show you how I'm gonna mount that. I'm just gonna put this, flip it upside down. Slide a little spacer in there. It's got two small Little screws, I'm gonna get those in. And all I'm really doing is just mocking this up. I'm not really worried about it being dead level yet. That'll be set after the fact. So that's in place. I have the reference marks before for where I set my eye relief. So I know exactly where I set this in the scope. But one thing I like to do before I do any of that, there's a million different ways to do this. You can do it in a gun vise. I could do it in that little vise I have at my house but a lot of times I really like to use a bipod with something in the back because I want to be able to level the gun perfectly. And the bipod just allows me to have a little more adjustability in the cant and levelness of the rifle. So I have this big rifle leveling kit I got from Defensive Edge. My dad picked up a rifle from Sean way back in the day. He had these level kits around 2018. He started selling these and I was like, well, if Sean Carlock uses them, they're good enough for me because that guy's a wizard. So these are his leveling kits. Absolutely amazing. Take this first one. I just install it in the back here because I want to try to level the gun this way. So right now I already have these little shims back here set up. So this gun is level, but in my experience, the more levels, the better. So you'll see it throughout this whole process. I have a metric ton of levels because I just want to make this perfect right now. So I got that level and then I'm going to take this smaller level and measure it or level across the lower rings and then just adjust the gun until I get level. And I will say I already set this bipod up a little bit ago, so it is level. So now I have a reference mark. So that's level. I can move to here, double check, that's level. I can even double check on the pick rail. It's level as well. And now the reason why I'm gonna do this is set this little reference mark. Once I put the scope in there, I lose that reference mark. So I want that right now. And I have this other little level system from Wheeler that I'm gonna attach in the front of the barrel. And that's gonna be then, once I put the scope on there, I'm gonna utilize that bubble to make sure I don't bump the rifle and make a true, true system when I'm putting the scope on the rifle. And this is pretty easy to set up. You just gotta spin it. Get on the barrel, I like to do a flat spot. And if it's fluting on the barrel, it's not gonna impact it that much, but I try to go where there might not be as severe of fluting. And it has another adjustment on the top where you actually can, once you tighten this thing down, you can adjust this top part to uh, actually get it in place. I'll roughly get it close, tighten this up. And I can adjust this dial on top to make it so it matches this level on the back side. And just wanna make sure it's perfect. Okay. And now I just adjust this one and I'm trying to get the bubble perfectly center. So I got bubble center for both of these. Just double check, or I suppose this is probably triple check by now. Okay, so I got that level reference with this bubble level. This one's still level with the gun. Now I can move this piece off. And so when I'm leveling a rifle scope, again, there's a million different ways to do this. Usually I set this up with all these levels and then I'll go and hang a plumb bob, double check on the plumb bob. But I feel like this gives me a really good starting point. And a lot of times this is all I really need because I'm so kind of dialed on the process of how I do this. But you'll notice on you know, you got a turret cap on the top. A lot of people will just level off the top turret cap, move this till it's now centered in the bubble. But no matter which scope you use, I've used, 
you know, set up guns for my dad using Night Force, Vortex, Loophold, whatever it may be. If you level out the top turret cap, a lot of times you're not gonna have a perfect level. Cause I can take my turret cap right now, spin my turret cap, even though that was just level right there, and now it's slightly different. Moved again, it's gonna be slightly different because that turret cap is on, you know, a system going up and down. And as you spin that, there could be some tolerances right there that makes that so it's not perfectly level every single time. So I don't believe in just throwing that up there and calling that good. That's why I really like Sean's setup from Defensive Edge. I will level the rifle scope from the guts, from the bottom of the rifle scope. So basically I take this flat piece, put it underneath there, and then when I'm putting this on there, it can be perfectly level because the scopes, from what I gather, are all manufactured off this flat surface when it's mounted in there, so everything is true to the guts of this rifle scope which that's why I love mounting on the bottom. So I just want to get everything lined up with my reference marks. And as you remember before, I index these so I know which way they match. So when I put them on here, the back is the back and it's not the front and they're not flipped around the opposite way. So I just want to start mocking these up, get in the correct position, check out my reference marks here, make sure everything's the same for my eye relief. And then I'm going to put some Loctite in and start the process. So again, Loctite, I just use a little bit. I don't like to take the Loctite and dump it on here because I don't want too much Loctite because it can alter um, my torque setting. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Loctite on this cap. And a little Loctite, as always, goes a long ways. So I'm just going to take a little toothpick, get this stuff on the back side. Start dropping them in. Now I have the Loctite on there. Now I'm gonna to start to tighten these down just snug. Again, going cross pattern. So that way you wanna make sure they are evenly gapped between each side, the lower and upper ring. You don't want to have one torque one way or the other because it's not going to be a consistent uh, torque setting. And at this stage, you should still be able to rotate your scope back and forth. A little bit tighter. And then I'm just going to double check the gap all the way around. Just make sure it's fairly even. This one has to go tighter on this side. Okay. Now here's where the extra level comes into play. Up on the bottom of the gut, and it's gonna be hard for everyone else to see, unfortunately. But basically I'm just taking this, putting it underneath there, holding it with my opposite hand, and then just referencing it as I rotate the scope to then make it level. And then once I get that part level, I'm gonna cross-reference with the front, trying to touch or move the gun, and make sure everything's level over there. And what this is gonna do is help the rifle scope track at distance as well because everything's gonna be true. And that's what we want. We wanna make sure everything's perfect. As you can see, this does not matter right now. So don't even worry that that's not in the correct level. And as I'm checking this out with my hand held underneath there, I'm gonna tighten these down a little bit tighter. That way it doesn't move on me. I'm just going finger tight, crisscross pattern. And now that's looking good, it's matched up. And so now I wanna set my torque wrench, 18 inch pounds for this set of rings and rifle scope. Do not go more. You don't want to uh, feel like you have to over torque it and dent your scope because that's not gonna make a track as well. And while you're doing this again, you gotta take the, the lower level on the guts. I'm just gonna do slowly Increase everything, that way nothing's moving. You'll notice I'm not just rushing through this, I'm taking my time, making sure everything's even. Still referencing that level, and that one's still in the same spot as well. So I'm constantly looking at both levels as I'm going through this process. 
So that's that 18 inch pounds front and the rear. And now it's time to do set the bubble level. So this can be a little tricky trying to do this on camera, but I need to loosen these up. And now with that one on the front as my reference, I'm going to rotate this to where it's completely in the center of the bubble. And again, you kind of constantly want to then reference both of these. And if you want a third one, throw a third one on there to also make sure everything is now matching, which I do have. And now I just need to slowly tighten this up while referencing the front, which again is going to be a little difficult. And you could put Loctite in here, but I'm not going to put Loctite on these ones. So now it's finally tightened. I'm just basically going, you know, finger tight, not trying to over torque it again because you could as well damage a scope tube if you over tighten it. So I got that matched up with the front bubble level. Everything is perfectly square. Now, like I said, I probably will hang a plumb bob, double, triple check it to make sure everything's aligned. Go shoot it, go do a tall target test, make sure everything is exactly perfect and it should be set up and going ready to shoot some animals. So got a few more things though. I need to put on here, I need to put on my throw lever just to make things easy when uh, adjusting it. So it's got a vortex throw lever. I think I'm actually gonna take this all the way apart. Let's see if I can get by without taking it apart. So trying to set this up is kind of a uh, little guessing game at first. I'm just going to get it on there tighten it down and I actually want this so it's easy to go low power and easy to go in high power and doesn't obstruct seeing some of my turrets. Let me just take a look through there. I could actually, yeah, I can lean over and see that. So I'm going to tighten this down. And there you have it. So I got throw lever installed, low power, max power, super easy. And that's basically how you set up a rifle scope. Back with the continuation of my Browning rifle build. So I'm on the scope, got that completely dialed. Now what I wanna do is just my personal preference. I do like to customize guns as much as possible. So I do pop out factory triggers, whether it's a muzzle loader or rifle and put in a custom trigger. And just so happens that now in the Go Home Gear Shop, we are carrying Timney triggers. So Timney makes a trigger specifically for a Browning X-Bolt. I absolutely love these triggers. Use them, like I said, in all my guns. If you're a person who likes a stock trigger, by all means, use it. This is just me tinkering and able to customize my rifle to how I want to shoot it. So I'm going to pop out the factory trigger and put this custom one on before I even shoot the gun. So step to do this, obviously everything's safe, unloaded. I'm just going to put my gun over. And we're gonna take an Allen. We just gotta loosen up this, take the floor plate off. Pop both of these out, and then just takes this guy off. Take them out. If you're unsure of which um, goes where, you can take a picture of it right now. Usually the short ones in the front, tall ones in the back, or just keep it like this and set it down somewhere. So you know where it goes. And now we have to carefully pop this off, which can sometimes be a little difficult because it is factory bedded. So it's got to pop it off, make sure to drop everything. As you can see here, the factory bedded up on the front and on the rear, and now we have it popped off. So now I need to clean off my table, move this guy. Okay, so on the Brownings, they have two little roll pins right here and right there. We're gonna pop those out. And sometimes it makes it easy. You can pull up this little arm. This will pop out. And you're gonna to wanna to save your safety tang and save those for later. And then they only pop out one way. And unfortunately it's gonna be this way away from the camera. So I'm gonna take a little roll pin here and a little small little hammer. It's just a wheeler kit. And I'm carefully going to align that on the first roll pin and then tap away. And eventually it'll start pushing it down. And then do the other side as well. And I'll lift it up so you guys can see what I did. 
You see here, these two pins are starting to pop out. If they're loose, you can pull them out. And now this trigger just comes right out like that. So one thing you want to keep note of, the way they came out, there's actually a little rough surface on the end. So I'm keeping both those pointing that way because when I flip this back around, I'm pushing them down through the same side with the rough end to start it. And then the trigger just mounts on. And now for this setup, we want to go the opposite way. So when you do punch them in from this way, back through. So again, try not to damage your scope or anything like that while you're doing this. And move this little device over. So I'm going to punch them the opposite way that they came out in. So align that first one, get it centered, take the other one, same thing, align it. That'll give you a good starting point. You can kind of sometimes push them in there. And then once you get them going, you're going to want to actually take something a little bit bigger, one of the roll pins. Ah, there it is. So I like to use one of these bigger ones. So it's easier to hit. Now I'm going to put the roll pin right on the edge of that and then tap the top part. And eventually you'll tap it and it'll get flush. That one's flush. And that one's flush. So you can see, now I have as you can see, now I have the roll pins both in there. And you can see on that side, perfectly flush. And now I need to take the arm and put it in there. And the way it's designed, there's a little flatter part. It's not quite round, so it goes in that little spot right there in the timney, rotates it back around. And see if I can do this all in one hand. And then I'm going to slide that in there. And then that's how it goes forward and backwards. So you want to make sure you get that in the right place. And then we just have to take the rifle stock, balance it, and we're just going to drop it in there, flip everything back over, and now we we'll just put it back together again. I'm not going to torque these down. I'm just going to hand tighten them right now just to make sure everything functions. All right. Flip that over. Just to make sure everything works. And I want to always test to make sure the safety can move forward and backwards because sometimes like on a different stock, like a Macmillan stock, sometimes you have to shave out that little spot where that arm is. So I just want to make sure safety moves forward and backwards. Obviously there's nothing in there. And then just give it a little test. Everything is good. And then what I also like to do a lot, because this was set at the factory at a pound and a half, which is what I like to do. Pound and a half on all my hunting rifles. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. You can adjust it. I'm just going to test it out to see what it's at right now. Let's see if I have to adjust it before I go shoot this thing tomorrow. So it's a trigger pull gauge. Just roughly get it set up here. And then sometimes it's nice to actually get your rifle in. It fully locks and nothing moves. Turn it on. Zero it out, and slowly pull it back. And that broke at two pounds, 2.4. Gonna clear it again and try it one more time. One pound 13. So there's probably a lot of variation in how I'm pulling and if this is moving back and forth, but I might actually go in and lighten up that trigger just a little bit. Yeah, one pound, 13 ounces. So I like it a pound and a half. So I'm gonna probably pop that back off and just adjust it really quickly. But as you can see, that's simple, easy, how to replace a trigger on a Browning X bolt with the Timney. So one final 
step for the 6.8 Western build that I'm going to do is I like to add a full-on Arca, or in this case, it's a basically a hunter's rail from Salmon River Solutions. It has a Picatinny in the front, full Arca in the back. That way I can mount it to a tripod if I want to shoot off a tripod. I can still have a Picatinny in the front. You know, I can attach my chronograph to my rifle at all times, which I highly recommend everyone does. That way I can track data on every single shot. So what I'm going to, need to do is basically I'm going to mount this on here and I will walk you through how I'm going to do that really quick so you can see it visually. Again, make sure I don't drop anything. I'll just try this really quick. I'm going to take these. I'll just get this base mocked in. Okay, I'm only going to put one of these in just so I can explain this. So it's all said and done. Pretty much I'm gonna mount this right here. Obviously it does have a little cutout down here. I could slide it down further. If I start to slide it down further where that hole is gonna be on this side, I actually want to utilize that rather than this so it doesn't move forward and backwards. So I'm not gonna put it all the way in the bottom, but what I'm gonna do now, I'm not gonna bore you guys. I'm gonna to have to go home. I'm going to take some bits, like a three quarter inch um, saw bit and auger those out. I'm going to actually place these little claw nuts inside here. I'm going to JB weld those claw nuts in. That way when I put these uh, screws for the rail, it actually gives a way firmer, better, you know, system than doing it through these, through the little uh, composite part of the stock. So we can actually have something firm to bite on so nothing will move. So I'm going to, you know, drill that one in, drill that one in, and I'm going to mark that hole where that one is, drill that through, and then also put one back there and epoxy that in and make sure everything's perfectly straight. That way, like I said, when it's all said and done, it'll look like that and I'll have a full arc rail to again, shoot up a bipod, my uh, tripod, that sort of thing. So like I said, I won't bore you guys with how to do that. It's gonna take a lot of drilling and a lot of time just to actually get those claw nuts in there and epoxy them in. And then I'm gonna make sure also my barrel is fully free floated. So at the same time, I'll take a dollar bill, slide it up and down the barrel make sure there's no catching points. If I need to knock some of these down, I'll knock some of these little areas right here down with the Dremel or any other tool I got at home. And I'm also going to, at the same time, clean up the action. As you can see here, there's a lot of oil and stuff from the factory on the action. So I'm gonna clean that up. And then I also, most likely, probably not right away, but I might tear apart the factory bedding and actually do my own bed job on the full complete area here and probably add some, uh, some pillars in there as well. So that's just kind of how I like to take a stock rifle stock like this and make it custom. So a lot of fun, but again, at the end of the day, it's all for precision and I'm a hunter first, but I want to make that best shot count. So that's why I take all this time, as you've seen in all these videos, to make a stock rifle as best as it can be. So this is the process of installing this rail from Sam River Solutions. It's a Picatinny in the front and an Arca Swiss in the back. I'll show you that in a second, but Basically what I did, took a three quarter little saw bit here and cut out spots for these claw nuts on all three of these areas. And then took a soldering iron, kind of went around, cleaned it up a little bit, got rid of some of these little ribs in there, trying to make that all flush and sit flat in there. And those two spots on this one, I had to mock up and drill, and do a bunch of extra work. But you can see here, this is basically what the uh, final product will look like. So yeah, it's got a Picatinny in the front, full arc in the back, basically the same setup I have in all my rifles. And then the only thing that's left to do is I'm going to take some JB Weld and put JB Weld underneath the claw nuts before I attach it. And then I'm going to fill in the sides with some JB Weld to kind of lock it in place. That way I know it's a sure um, solid mounting solution when I'm putting everything on there. And it should be really good. So yeah, I'm just going to use the paste wax again on the screws, that way I don't get any epoxy on there. And let this sit overnight and that should be ready to roll. So that's basically the run through on A to Z, how I take every single Browning rifle that I get and turn it into, you know, something that to me is something I'll be very happy to shoot behind. It'll shoot perfect shots every single time. And of course, like I said a million times before, there's a ton of different ways to do this. So this is just the way I prefer it. If you guys have any questions at all, drop them in the comments down below. There'll be a bunch of links Throughout all this content, I'm also doing a written article throughout this process as well on a different rifle. But this is just the way I set up my rifle. And 
works for me. So best of luck this fall.